to 1 Samuel 30. 1 Samuel 30. We were reading from verse 1 to 8. We shall read together. 1 Samuel 30 from verses 1 to 8. Are we there? Okay. All right, let's read together. And it came to pass when David and his men were come, um, come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. Amen. I said we were reading together. I only hear my voice. Let's try it again. First Samuel 30 will be written from 1 to 8. First Samuel 30 from verse 1 to 8. Are we there? Okay, so let's take from verse 2. And had taken the woman captives that they were daring, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away, and went on their way. Verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives, and their sons, and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Verse 5. And David's two wives were taken captives, I you know the, um, the Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal the Camelite. And David was really distressed for the people's sake of showing him because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abita, the princess Abelite's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the apple. And Abita brought thee the apple of son. Last verse. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fear recover all. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we thank you for giving us the privilege, O oh Lord, to be in your presence, to share your word. Father, we invite you at this time, O oh Lord, come and take control, have your way, O oh Lord. Father, speak and let your people hear. Father, come and give us the inner voice to listen, to hear. Give each person a word. Let something touch each person. Father, come and do it, O oh Lord. And at the end, take all the glory, Father. Take all the glory. Father, take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, this month, I believe it's men's month, and also happens to be the youth day. Uh, so and I believe the topic that um, we've been looking at, it's uh, men of war. So I uh, believe you've had Elijah, you've had Samson, and some other uh, people as well. So this morning, my own um, man of war is David. So the title is David, a man of war. Now, we all know what war is. You know, by definition, war is a state of armed conflict between two or more entities. It is characterized by extreme um, aggression, destruction, using regular or even irregular means to achieve its own personal goal or attend. You love that grammar, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in similar terms, it just means a conflict between two people using any means necessary to achieve what you want. That's it. I mean, there's different types of war, as, as we know. Um, can we get a few examples when you hear war? Civil war, the Cold War, uh huh, amen. But it boils down to two types of war, really: the physical one and the spiritual one. So this morning we're going to talk about the the non-physical one, which is the spiritual warfare. So when it comes to Christian life, yes, we have the physical war where you know maybe you need something it's not there, you know, or you want something you don't see, but also the ones that most of the time that we battle, I would say almost every day, is the spiritual war. Amen? So this morning we're going to look how David, a man of war, used some devices, some uh, wisdom to approach winning his own war. So now there's two errors I believe we make as Christians when it comes to spiritual warfare. And it's very easy. The first one is sometimes we tend to overdo it. And the other one is underdoing it. Now, what do I mean by overdoing it? 
I'm pretty sure we've all, um, you know, been there or hurt somebody. You know, they would just wake up with, ah, you know, I thank God, you know, um, the, the devil was waging war, and you know, but you know, God take control. Amen. But then when they start to analyze what they have done, you say, ah, I don't know, is that the devil? Now you can't wake up in the morning, no exercise. You had what bacon, egg, and cheese for breakfast, <laughs> for lunch, you know, maybe some what well, hamburgers and you know whatever you call it. At night you have some Chinese food. And then it's like now 8 p.m. you're having a headache. And you say it's the devil. No, it's your blood pressure. Amen? Because you've taken too much salt, no exercise, and then you say, ah, the devil's out. Well, no. <laughs> you know, it's that's not spiritual. Amen. We can't blame it on spiritual, but there's some things we have done physically that you know hey, you have a hand in this. So that's overdoing it when you say, okay, everything is not spiritual. Amen. 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 I mean, I know as Christians we want to believe that, but I'm going to, you know, a little bit explain more what I mean. Everything is not spiritual. Because the same way in the Bible, Christ healed some people by casting out demons. You know, because they had demons in them. So that's spiritual. Like, get out. At the same time, he did some miracles where he never mentioned any demons. He did some miracles where he said, oh, your faith has made you well. But he didn't say, oh, the demon in you hasn't. No. So the same way we tend to think you know, everything is spiritual, sometimes it's just not. There's physical and there's spiritual. So as Christians, when it comes to spiritual warfare, we have to be very careful not to overdo it and not to underdo it. Amen, somebody? Amen. Somebody, tell somebody, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. And don't underdo it. So basically what we're talking about is a fine balance. It's a fine balance. Now, I'm not saying there's no spiritual warfare, because let's open our Bible to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, we shall read uh, verse 12. Anybody that sees it first, please read it for us. Ephesians 6, verse 12. Someone? Amen. So it says we are not wrestling just against flesh. So if it's not against something you can see, then what is the opposite of that? Something you can't see, which means spiritual. So we also have to be mindful and use wisdom. There is something called spiritual you know, warfare. So let's not say, oh, uh, perhaps we just say oh, there's no spiritual. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying we need to have a fine balance. And as the Bible has told us, we are not only wrestling against flesh and things that we had seen, also some spirit within us. So that's why sometimes it's very important to kind of pray we pray. Because sometimes we're thinking there was a devil, but not knowing it might even be you. Now for example, the one that I made this morning, um, that I just made this now, someone having a headache. You know, you're eating all this bad food, you don't exercise, your, you know, your, your pressure's high, and then you go, you know, um, the enemy, enemy that's causing this headache, but I kill it, kill it. Who are we telling God to kill? The enemy didn't make you eat all that. You chose to do that. But at the same time, you know, now you say, ah, no, I can't move, I can't work. But you're asking God to kill the enemy that's causing you to feel this. Amen. So that's why sometimes we have to use wisdom. It's always good to pray against the spirit in that person. God didn't kill the person that he healed. He sent a demon to come out. He didn't say, I killed you with a demon. No, he cast the demon out. So we have to be careful as Christians when we pray, especially when it comes to things that we don't see. Because everything, yes, it's not physical. At the same time, we do have some spirituality that's going on. But if you don't know the exact spirituality, how can you pray against it? Amen, somebody. Amen. So now, how should we as Christians face this spiritual warfare? Any examples? How do you think, as Christians, we should face this spiritual warfare? I'll just say two people. Prayers, amen. Anybody else? Knowledge, amen. One more person. Why is this side no? Uh, no, no, thank you. This side, talk to me. Just one person. So just give me your answer. You can't say the same thing. No. <laughs> Faith in God. Amen. So there's a lot of ways we can battle spiritual warfare. But this one, I'm just going to look at just three examples using what David did to face his own, because I know that's what she can do now. 
So it's the same thing our Father in heaven. So anything we are going through, He already know the powers you have. He already know your capabilities. He already know what you can do, cannot do. So if He allows it to happen, it's for His own glory. Amen, Amen somebody. Hallelujah. So we cannot let ourselves to be too emotional. It says David is not a, you know, a small person. Right? This is a mighty man of God. And he says he cried. Can you imagine that you want to go to war? Or not even war. Let's say you want to go and fight with somebody. And then the person that was leading you just started crying. <laughs> would, would you want to follow him? <laughs> so, so it's the same way. It's like we're going to war now. And it's okay, Christ is not happy, but we want to go and fix this. And then Christ starts crying. What would we say? But then we're quick to say, what? Well, I'm a Christian, which means Christ-like. So if Christ is not going to do the same, so why should we? So we always have to remember, no matter what we're facing in life, don't get too emotional. Tell somebody, don't get too emotional. Don't get too emotional. So the second thing that we, we shouldn't do when we're facing any kind of warfare, you know, spiritually or physically, is not for us to allow fear to overcome us. Amen? Amen? In the same chapter we are, in uh, verse 6, it says, And David was greatly distressed. Distress means fear. You know, you're trembling, you know, you, you, you just, oh, I can't do this, you know, this is impossible to do, you know. But the Bible tells us that it's not even you that is doing the battle. It says, for God himself will fight for you. So if you know who's fighting for you, then why should fear overcome you and I? Because once we have fear, and then you lose focus. Losing focus, then you, you even forget, forget the, pro the problem itself. And then we just accept defeat. Most of the time, it's not the problem itself that defeats us. It's the fear that we have. It's like if something happens now before, you know, take your time, okay, what's going on? But you just start running around and then by the time you know it, you don't even know what is chasing you. Forget, you lose focus because fear comes in. I'm not saying we're never human. If David did it, it says he was distressed. So yes, it will come to you and I. But now that we're talking, we have to remember this is a device of the enemy. Amen. Amen. One of the best prayers every Christian prays is what? Every weapon for me against me shall not prosper. Amen. If you want to start a revival anywhere, just give them that prayer point. You see people. <laughs> but now, it's true. Now when the problem does come, instead of us to what? Declare the word and say, ha, this is a device of the enemy to make me lose focus and say, any weapon, because what we think weapon, we're thinking gun, we're thinking, you know, mm -mm. weapon can be fear, amen? Because when you fear, you've already given up. I wrote something down here, it says fear can be as simple as either you face everything and rise to the occasion, or you forget everything and you run. So as Christians, we have to determine what are we going to do when the battle comes. Am I going to face it and rise? Or am I going to forget it and run? Because at the end of the day, we keep thinking, oh, a uh, weapon is something, you know, you have to see it physical. It has to be. No, it could be something as simple as this one has the spirit of fear. That's it. And the battle is won because all you worry about, ah, I can't do this. Oh, my God. Oh, this is what they revealed to me. Oh, I'm going to lose my job in two weeks. And then we're not focusing on Christ himself because we believe the problem is bigger than Christ. Because the fear already has a place in our heart. We haven't even started battling the issue yet, but the fear itself has overcome. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. The third thing that I have here, that as Christians, that we shouldn't do what we are facing any kind of warfare. I know we're talking about spiritual warfare, but the same thing with the physical. It says, don't rush into it. Because sometimes we just go straight head on into it without having a plan, a strategy. We just, oh, okay, I, I must do it. Let's look at the Bible, the same verse we are, uh, 1 Samuel 30, at verse 13. It says, And David said unto him, To whom belong thou, and whereas? Down. And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an uh, Amalekite, and my master left me because three days gone I fell asleep. Now, verse 17 now says, And David smote 
them from twilight even unto evening of the next day and escape from uh, another man or oh, they were saved. Now, what is my point from here? The same person that David found on the way, he could have easily killed that person. Let's say he rushed in now, because this person belonged to the people that took his, his wife and everything. So let's just say he wasn't thinking, you know, he just, oh, you're one of them? He would just kill him and keep going. However, he didn't rush in. He used strategy, he used wisdom. He spoke to him, he fed him. Now in return, in verse 17, this is the same person that kind of gave him the blueprint because he already knows, you know, what is ahead. He said, this is where they are, this is what you need to do. So that is telling you and I as Christians, sometimes God has already, not even sometimes, every time, he has already given us the answer to the problem we are facing. Yeah. It's just up to us now to be careful, not to rush it. Sometimes, you know, we just believe there's, um, um, there's a one half fits all. It doesn't work that way. As we can see in the Bible, it's not the same strategy for every single prayer request. Some of us, you know, just because we want something or we're facing something, the first thing we do is what? Bring out fasting, just keep fasting. As God told you, that's the way? You, you just fast, you know, you will do some weights, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just fasting. You nothing will change because that's not the blueprint. That's not the answer to that spiritual warfare. It might be something that's just go to church and do a testimony. It might be something that's just you know give somebody you know um, the money you don't have. You know give it to them. So God will always give us that blueprint. What we need to win any spiritual warfare because He already knows about it, and He's only going to allow it. Not just to test us, but to show His glory, to show His power over everything. So please tell somebody, don't rush in. So this also goes to youth. Any issues, anything we're facing, we need to take our time. Talk to A, talk to B. I'm not saying everybody talks is going to give you the best solution, but it's better to seek advices. Talk to your pastor, talk to your youth leaders. Talk to somebody else other than if it's not your parent you can't talk to. There must be somebody else that you can relate to. If it's somebody in school. And then now you bring everything down and you look at it. And lastly, you pray over it. And God will reveal the right answer to that situation. Amen, somebody. Amen. So now we've, we've looked at what we shouldn't do as Christians when we're facing any kind of warfare. Now to round up, what do you think we should do as Christians when actually facing um, any kind of warfare? I'll take just two. One here, one here. Inquire from the Lord. Amen. Somebody else? Apply wisdom. Amen. So those are great examples and I think I kind of touched on it. So the first thing which you know, um, we heard that our mother just mentioned, it says to inquire from the Lord. Let's look at the same chapter we are on um, 1 Samuel 30 and verse 8. It says, And David inquired the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the answer him, Pursue, for that shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So the first thing, yes, we need to do is to have a strong ally. In any war, you need to have backup, you need to have somebody that's going to have your back. Any war. And as Christians, the best ally we can have is who? It's God himself. So, any issue comes, no matter how big, no matter how small, just know, oh, I have somebody. It's just not only me. So we go to him, you seek him, you talk to him. You tell him, God, this is what's going on. What is your will? Which way should I attack this? Which way should I go about it? You're just not doing it alone. You're not doing up. Oh, no, I, I've said this before. You know, or oh, oh, my sister I had the same issue. So this is what I'm going to do. No, you speak to your ally. America is one of the greatest country in the world, right? They have the best military and everything, but they also why anybody will mess with them because they have the most allies. So you mess with them here, it's okay. They have three, four other areas, other countries. That's why they have sanctions. Can you imagine one country keeps sanctioning this, sanctioning that person, and nothing happens to them? Because they have allies. So they can afford to sanction this and say, okay, we'll ban this, because they have allies. 
So the same way it's in the physical, it's the same way in the spiritual. You need the allies to have your back. And the biggest one we can have is Christ himself. Amen. Amen. The second thing we need to have when we're facing any, especially spiritual warfare, just like David did, is to have good weapons. Amen. Amen. You can't go to any war and say, you know, you have the, what is it, AK-37, I don't know how to call it, and I come with a rock. Who's going to win? <laughs> he said the rock. <laughs> Okay, you come with your rock, I come with a hammer tank. Then who wins? The rock, okay. Amen. So the same way in the physical is the same way in the spiritual. You need good weapons. Now, what are the weapons of Christians? I'm not telling anybody here to go and buy a gun, you know. I'm, I'm talking spiritually now. Amen. So what do we think are the spiritual weapons of us Christians? You know, you have spoken already. We want someone else. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Prayer? Okay. Amen. Somebody else? I can't hear you. The word of God. Word of God. Amen. 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 So now let's look at what the Bible actually said about the kind of weapon we need. Can somebody open Ephesians 6? Ephesians 6. Verse 11. We put on the whole armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's Amen. It says put on the whole armor. Now, what does that mean? It means you have to have something in your head, something in your feet, something in your body of God. Now, the Bible Fathers explains it to us what, it, what that means. The same chapter that we are. Verse 13, can somebody read that? Amen. Do we have the uh, now? Some of us, what we try to do is, you know, what we're facing any kind of warfare. You know, we want to say, ah, um, devil, you will die. No, you have to use the word of God. The Bible says this is what the word, because Christ did it. He said it. You use the words. Don't just use, you know, memory verses that you know you've um, crammed in. No, no, use the word because the word is the truth. That's your belt. That's the first weapon we need. Verse 15 says what? And I agree. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you be fully Amen. See, now I'm talking about shoes. So we need shoes when we're going to war. One of the reasons, um, I think, the, what was it, uh, Napoleon lost the war was because they didn't have good shoes. As simple as that. They didn't have good shoes and it was winter. By the time they were walking to where they, the war was going to be half the men, they died. So the same way in our spiritual life, we need shoes. And the shoes here is telling us the peace. There's a difference between, you know, when you're going for something, you're worried, and when you're going for something, and you have peace that, I have this already. It's not being arrogant, it's not being, you know, prideful, it's just knowing what you carry. When you're going into a job interview, when you have the peace of God, even the people, they'll just be asking questions, you might even say the wrong answer. But with the peace of God inside you, ah, very good, very good. So we need to have that peace when we're facing battle, which goes back to don't just rush into it. Don't just, you know, um, get too emotional. Have your peace, because Christ has given it to us, and no one can take it away. Amen. Amen. Verse 16, what's the next um, thing we need to wear? Amen. So when you go to work, you need the shield to protect you so the enemy don't, you know, um, they, they might have arrows, so you need the shield. The physical, shield. And the spiritual, it says faith. Faith. You can pray fast, do everything you want, but if you don't have that faith, don't go into war. Amen? Amen. It says you need your faith. Because that's your shield. When they throw arrows, because... Whoever you, of the spirit you want to fight, they, they, they're, they're powerful too. Did they have weapons too? So it's, you know, um, they said, Taku me, I taku you. Um, the way you know, they, they used to say, so I'll face you, you face me. That's who's going to last. But if you don't have that faith to, to, to guide you, when, you know, the enemy tries something, you know, put fear. If you don't have the faith, say, aha, this is just something false. You know, if you don't have the faith that God has already won this. You know, if you don't have the faith, I'm, I'm not coming by myself. 
I have to think I'm here with God himself. So that's the shoe we mean as Christian. The faith, because it's only through your faith. My faith cannot do anything for you. Your faith cannot do anything for me. My faith cannot do anything for my kids. So each one, you have to have your own faith. And the only way you develop your faith, like we learned, is by being in the presence of God, knowing His voice, you know, knowing His will, and knowing His word. Amen. In verse 17, I think we have another weapon. Put on salvation as your helper. Amen. Take the sword of the Spirit. Amen. So we need salvation and also to pray. It says the helmet, what we put on our head is the salvation. Just knowing that Christ has already paid the price. So no matter what obstacle, no matter what pain, no matter what we are facing, he's already died for it. And you're not, he, there's no such thing that, you know, he's coming to die twice. So if he's already paid for it, so why would I be fearful of any, any devices that the evil one wants to throw at me? Because I have the right equipment to fight. The first one says the truth, which is the belt. The second one, you know, is, is the shoes, which means our peace. The third one is the faith, the shield. The next one is salvation, you know, what you put on top of your head. Very important. We have to cover the head. And the last one says pray in the spirit. So no matter anything and everything we do, we still need what? Prayer. Amen. Amen. So now the last thing we need to do to face any warfare is to have warriors. Now I'm talking about prayer warriors. We need prayer warriors, not gossip warriors. Amen. Amen. Not Facebook followers. I'm sure we have a few. You know, not not the thousand likes we get on IG. That's not going to do anything for us. Not the you know, thank God for WhatsApp. You know, only the, the older ones use it, right? You know, the, the youth don't use it. They think we are old if you use WhatsApp. So many group chats, you know, for something. Yes, they might be relevant, but do we have a group chat or a gathering for just prayers? I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, us, we go on men's nights out. Do we have men nights out to pray? We have, you know, it's the girlfriend getaway trip. Do we have a getaway trip just for prayers? Even as family, we have family game nights. You know, we're going to play a game, we're going to watch a movie. Those are excellent. I'm not saying don't do it. But do we also have family prayer nights? In the Bible, David went to war, but he didn't go alone. He had, what, 400, 600 people with him. If we're going to pray, we're going to need a prayer warrior, which means it's not going to be one, it's going to be two or three people. No, it's going to be as much as possible. If we're able to do those three things when we face any war, spiritually or physically, God has already won the war. Amen? Amen? So this afternoon as I'm closing, I just want to encourage us, no matter what war or any spiritually, physically we're facing, Remember, God has already won the most important war of all, which He died for you and I. So any other war is just little wars that we're seeing that it's not going anywhere. Only if we allow it, by being fearful, by rushing into it, by not taking it to God, by not having prayer warriors, by not putting on the full armor of God. And this afternoon, we've already learned that all we need to do, put on the armor, believe in Him, have faith, because we are not fighting <clears throat> for victory. Amen? Amen? We are already fighting in victory yes. because we carry Christ. And Christ doesn't lose. So I encourage us this afternoon as we rise to our feet because we, we also come from a church of prayer. Amen? Amen. So, so my pastor was very upset if we close and he said, ah, you didn't pray? <laughs> So the first prayer point this afternoon, I'm just going to ask God that every spiritual warfare that wants to attack me and my family from any direction, we cast it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that's the first prayer. So are we ready? 
So we're going to pray as if we're going to war. We're not praying as if, you know, it's a, it's a prayer meeting. One second, I'll be careful. So we need to write them, I mean, from the bottom of your heart, from the bottom of your soul. It's not until when war comes, you start to pray. You start, you know, you prepare ready. The reason why nobody wants to mess with America is what? They're already ready. Under one hour, you want to start a war? Let's go. Amen? I, I, can't, I can't say the same thing for my beloved country, Nigeria. <laughs> but as Christians, we need to be ready. And this is the time. We're not going to wait until oh, something comes. No, when it comes, <laughs> I've already prayed up, so I'm ready. Let's go. So this morning, let us ask God, any spiritual warfare that want to attack me, my family, my ministry, in the name of Jesus, we cast it out. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you at this time, Lord, for any spiritual warfare that wants to attack them, so Lord, that is planning an attack on our life, on our soul, on our ministry. Father, we ask you, oh Lord, to cast it out, to cast it out, to cast it out, to cast it out, in the name of Jesus. We cast it out, we cast it out. Father, we cast it out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second prayer. We're going to ask God, tell him, come on, put that armor on me. We just, you know, know what it is. So once you have it, you can be sleeping, <laughs> walk, let's go. You can be driving, walk, let's go. So Father, come on, put it on me, on my family, on everything that belongs to me. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you at this time, come on, put your armor on me, O Lord. Come on, protect me, O Lord. Father, come on, put it on top of my head, on my feet, or on my belt, O Lord. Oh, my hand, your sword, Father, come on, give it to me, come on, give it to me, O oh Lord. Oh, come on, make me ready so I can be ready. Every Father, I thank you, I receive it. It shall be well with me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. So the last prayer, we're going to pray together as one. Amen? Amen? So you know when the soldiers of army are coming, you know, when you see the group and the way they're in our unison, you'll be fearful. Amen. But if you see somebody doing this, somebody dancing, no. So the last prayer, we're going to stop. Is everybody going to good shoes? Uh -huh. So we're going to stop on any attack of the enemy that is coming towards our life. The ones that are dead, that want to rise up, we're going to kill it again. So when we're doing it, we want it to be as one, loud. Hey, it, it can be, you know, ah, he's just doing exercise. Is any way you have your faith is gonna work, amen. Because we don't know what you know is going on in the ramp. But we as Christians just have to stay ready. So we're gonna ask God any kind of attack, any spiritual warfare that wants to rise again in the name of Jesus, we we, we clock out it, we stop on it in the name of Jesus, it shall not rise again in the name of let us go father in the name of Jesus. So we ask you at this time, oh Lord, every spiritual warfare, oh Lord, that wants to rise in our life, oh Lord, Father, we stop on it, we stop on it, we say it is dead, it is dead in our life. Father, we ask you, oh Lord, to kill it permanently. Oh Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We know you are in control. We know you are the mighty man of war that you yourself. Father, we ask you, O oh Lord, that everything that we have heard today, O oh Lord, Father, come on, perfect it in our heart. Come on, make it meaningful in our soul. Father, let it touch somebody. Let it speak to somebody. When we need it, we will remember it. When it's needed, it will come to us afresh. Father, we thank you. We praise you, O Lord. Father, we ask you to take all the glory, take all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's pray together.